Welcome to Martin Survival. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to process and make paint using red ochre, a natural pigment. So stick around, we got a great show coming up. All right, so I wanna welcome you back to Martin Survival. So if we take a look back into the archeological record, we in fact see a lot of California Indian tribes as well as tribes all across the United States, in fact use different colored pigments to paint their arrows. Like this arrow you see here, this is what we are going to paint today. They would paint their bows. This is a flat bow and they would create pictographs. And uh, pictographs often told stories. They told stories of journeys. They told uh, stories of, of birth. They told stories of adventure and stories of, uh, of one's life. And I find it very interesting when we look back into the archeological record and exactly how they made these pigments and, and, and what were some of the designs. I look at a, a pictograph panel and I try to get in the mindset of the person that was, uh, that was making that design and it's often very hard to do so, uh, but very interesting to say the least. So what you see right here is a, is a mortar. Uh, this, is, um, this is just a, a mortar that was given to me and I have a pestle right here and I have red ochre in here. This was an originally a yellow ochre. Uh, still an iron deposit. Um, often people will call it limonite, but once I fired it and you can still see some of the charring on this ochre, it turned red. So all I want to do to create my pigment is I start off with a, a very small amount and I just want to start pounding it down in this mortar with my pestle and some of it you can see still has a bit of a yellow tinge, but that's okay. Once I start mixing this together and start adding my water, it's going to be bright red. So we just take it in short strokes until we get it into a nice fine powder. And once I have it into a fine powder, I'm going to mix water with it. Uh, you could use animal fat, some native peoples did. Others used water, whatever they had available at the time. So I'm just taking real small strokes. I'm not really bearing into this because it's already, uh, it's already kind of a soft mineral. It wasn't too hard. So you can see we're starting to get that into a, into a powder. I want it a lot finer though. Now the more pigment you use, the larger mortar you would have to have. So if I was going to paint my entire bow here with pigment, I would need a larger mortar. Uh, but for an arrow, this should be just fine. want to get that into a real fine powder. Now the good thing about uh, about natural ochre compared to an acrylic paint is the withstanding to heat, especially when you fire it. Uh, making a pictograph and, and, and when you fire it, it, uh, it tends to last longer than ochre, or I mean, um, excuse me, acrylic paint. This was originally painted with acrylic paint and you can also see, just being out here in the heat, it's starting to melt. The natural ochre tends to last a little bit longer. Like I said, if you fire it, it'll last a, last a good while. Okay, so we have a, we have a nice deposit here. And this should be about good. And at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of water. Not much, because I want to start stirring it around just a little bit. And that should be good. I have my willow stick, and I'll just start stirring this. And 
and make my paint. want to get some off that side so I'm just going to kind of tilt the mortar and I have a good amount here so that should be good and we can start painting my pattern right up top on my arrow. And I already marked this with pencil, so I measured out my fletchings. And that's often how, I, uh, how I'll do it. Um, I've gotten to the point where I can almost eyeball it now, but just making a few pencil marks to where the quill ends, our feather starts, and then the quill ends again is a good marker and indication of, uh, of where I want to start my paints. And if you're first starting to learn how to make arrows, that's what you want to do. You want to, you want to start making them and, and get proper measurements of your fletchings and, and, uh, and your different patterns. Um, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to do a very basic pattern. Just do a, a couple red marks with some lines going through. Uh, traditionally, they would use juniper sticks. Up here they would. They would use juniper sticks. Uh, they would even put a, a piece of human hair on it. Um, they would use uh, uh, feathers as well since they didn't have uh, they didn't have these brushes so you can see how nice and red that is it's a beautiful color And this ochre, you know, it comes in all sorts of different colors. Um, a lot of times, once the uh, once the sun has hit the pigment over time and throughout the years, it'll actually change colors. Um, so, you know, a book that I would highly recommend checking out is Paul Campbell's Earth Pigments. Paul Campbell is uh, is very talented, a very skilled individual. In primitive technology and, and very very knowledgeable okay so then I'm going to come in with a, a smaller brush and we'll add a couple more lines And a little bit too much. And we'll add one more up top. And then I'm going to make a line going across, kind of a, a different pattern than what I usually make. Usually I get pretty intricate on my arrows, but uh, this will do. You can see how nice and dark that is. And this is all natural, once again, coming straight from the earth. 
And uh, one thing, you know, I want to recommend to you guys is ask before you take. And when you take, thank the earth for providing for you. Uh, if everybody took, we wouldn't have this stuff for us to use. So, you know, having a, having a deep connection, a deep relationship, and a deep respect for the earth is so important. All right, so the paint is now complete. As you can see, we have a nice traditional pattern up top, have a black acrylic paint on the bottom. All I have to do at this point is fletch this using turkey feathers and backstrap sinew. This is a mule fat shaft. It's hollowed out and sinew wrapped, have an arrowweed foreshaft and a black obsidian point at the tip. The best thing is, is I have more pigment left over, so I can paint a good three to four more arrows, just add a little bit more water and mix that up, and we're good to go. So I do want to take the time to thank my good friend Tony Sores for giving me this yellow pigment. Of course, when I got home, I fired it, and now you can see we have a, a beautiful red color. So this will last me a good while, and I'm thinking about painting a bow when I get home, maybe even this one. So with that, I do appreciate you joining me for this video. I'm Jeff with martinsurvival.com. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.